Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Am I the only one where recently I'm just hearing a lot of talk about a $1 million life insurance policy? I won't lie, it does sound appealing to get a $1 million payout in the unfortunate event of having to go through a loved one's passing or yourself being able to pass that on to your heirs or to your spouse. But as I've always come to know it, life insurance is not one size fits all. My name's KT and this is Simple Living with KT, the place where we talk about the issues facing our lives in a simple and mindful way. Losing a loved one is hard enough and having to come up with how you're gonna pay for the funeral and burial arrangements makes it even harder. Life insurance makes it a bit easier to handle those situations in that unfortunate event. But there's more to it than just figuring out how much you need for a life insurance policy. And that's what I want to dig into with this video because when you go get life insurance, of course, for the most part, you're going to go talk to a life insurance agent. And while I am not your life insurance agent, this video is just for general information so that you don't go into these meetings completely blind because there is a lot of information that can be coming towards you. The first thing I want to go over are the two main types of life insurance. The first is whole life and the second is a term policy. A whole life policy covers you for your whole entire life. And because it covers you for your whole entire life, you pay for it literally until the day you die. On the other hand, a term policy only covers you for a specific term. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of information when it comes to these types of policies. In this video, I'm really going to be focusing on term insurance policies. Some of the reasons why you might think that you need to pay the extra cost for a whole life policy, why that might not benefit you, and what you can do to make sure that you're still covered for your whole life without actually having to pay those costs. And the main reason I'm doing this is because I look at personal finances and money management as a holistic thing. Usually when you go in to your bank, they're looking at your bank account. If you go talk to a credit bureau, they're looking particularly at payment history. They're not figuring out you know, what your spending triggers are or what your long-term goals are, unless you're perhaps talking to a financial advisor who is then looking at your finances holistically and helping you make those money moves that will help you in the short term and the long term. In short, if there's someone else that depends on your income to, you know, sustain their livelihood and their lives, then you need life insurance. Let's look at a couple of scenarios at people at different times in their lives and how that will affect perhaps what you think about life insurance and whether it will benefit you at that time. So for the first stage of life, I'm gonna start just as a newborn because believe it or not, life insurance companies offer life insurance for newborns. They're not offering million dollar policies for a newborn. They usually tell you that there's no health checks and they usually have very low rates. And even with that very low rate, and the high payout of let's say 10,000 or even sometimes upwards of $50,000 for that newborn, it doesn't pass that first little test that I mentioned, which is having someone relying on your income. Average funeral costs are between $5,000 to $7,000 depending on you know, what you're looking for and also where you are in the country. And so while absolutely you can get that $10,000 or $50,000 for a child's life insurance policy, there's really no quite reason to. What I would recommend instead is just make sure that you have your emergency fund put together and perhaps a little bit extra as well just for that rainy day. And that's something that most people would be able to take care of out of pocket. 
And another thing they also think about, why would a life insurance company offer a policy upwards of $50,000 when it's known that no one's relying on that, you know, child's income? And it's because they're able to get a lot of premiums of people who get these types of policies and they only have to pay out somewhere less than 4% of them because the likelihood, let's say, of a child passing before five years old is less than 4%. As I say, everything with finances is personal, so absolutely you can get that type of policy if you'd like, but with just having a funded emergency fund and, and a little extra padding, you'd be able to handle an event like that. Instead of throwing money aside for that type of insurance policy, where you could be using that money for something else, like putting it into an investment. Now let's talk about just in general, young adults. And I'm thinking anywhere between the ranges of 18 to 30. So one thing I just want to make sure that we get out there is even if you're young, you still should get life insurance. And one, big detractor for people is thinking, well, my work offers life insurance, so I don't need it. And that is not fully true. If your work offers life insurance, of course, take them up on that offer and get that extra coverage. The other side of that is you only have that life insurance for as long as you're working with that company. And so I know there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there. If you decide to take your side business to your full-time main jam, then you will not have the life insurance that you had from your previous employer. That is how that works. And heaven forbid, if you're older and you need to get a medical exam to get the life insurance, you don't want to wait until you're older when one, they might require those health exams, or two, you develop a condition that would exclude you from getting life insurance later in life. It's better to get it while you're younger and then just to have it for those 20, 30, and I know there's 40 year terms out there. Well, you might be thinking, well, what about the idea that someone else is depending on my income? Well, perhaps I'm 20 and I'm not married and I'm not dating anyone. Do I still need to get a life insurance policy? And that depends on you and what you're looking for out of life, honestly. If you do see yourself as someone who wants to get married and have children or you're looking to adopt, then in those situations, in the future, someone is going to be depending on your income. And you could just get the life insurance as a precursor to that happening. And the younger you get life insurance, the lower your rate will be. Because once you get it, if you get a 30 year term and you're 20 years old, you're gonna pay that same little monthly or yearly price for your life insurance policy. If you wait till you're 30 or you wait till you're 35, it's gonna be a little bit more, sometimes a lot bit more <laughs> depending on where you're getting your quote. So if you're in the position where, you know, you have steady income and you've been hearing a little bit about life insurance and wondering if you should get it, yes, you probably should, especially if you can imagine your future and it does include a family in some shape or form, go ahead and get some quotes on life insurance to get that ball rolling. And something I didn't mention is how much to get for life insurance. In general, a rule of thumb that I've seen a lot online and that I subscribe to is getting 10 times your annual salary for your life insurance policy. And so if you're making $50,000 a year, go get estimates for a $500,000 life insurance policy. Of course, you absolutely can spring for that $1 million policy but let's be honest, your loved ones are going to be greatly taken care of with even a measly $500,000 from the life insurance policy. Mind my sarcasm. 
and something I want to make sure that people are also aware of. If you lapse on your life insurance policy, you're not always just able to call up the company and start that policy again. They do usually have a window for you, but if you, you know, but if you're delinquent on those payments, you might lose that policy completely. So make sure that no matter what the policy you get, you're ready to pay that premium for the next, you know, 20, 30, or 40 years. So if you lock yourself into a higher benefit and it might feel like a little high on your budget, it might be better just to get a lower um, benefit amount for your life insurance to make sure without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be able to pay for it. A great question that always comes up in the life insurance debate is what happens when I'm 50 or 60 and my life insurance policy expires because you know those 30 years went by, I paid for 30 years successfully, I lived, and now I have no life insurance policy. Now when I go look at rates, they are through the roof or I have a pre-existing medical condition and I cannot get life insurance. And for this, I have honestly the perfect scenario because this is something I did not fully understand a couple of years ago. And it's something I had to really figure the heck out because I got a lot of mixed information. Many people would say, well, to make sure that you'll always have coverage, get a whole life policy. One big issue, or maybe not issue, but detractor for whole life policies is that they generally cost a significant amount more for these policies compared to a term insurance policy. I was talking to a friend of mine and the topic of insurance, life insurance came up. He said that the reason he got the job that he's in right now is because he's not able to get life insurance. He had a term policy that expired after the 30 years and during that time he developed type 2 diabetes. Now he's older, he does not have savings, doesn't really have anything for retirement and has a wife that is staying home with their daughter who is also of just young age. And he also has a son. So he clearly fits all the criteria of someone who would need life insurance. I also want to mention his age. He was about 55-ish years old at the time that I was speaking to him. In his experience, he explained to me that if he understood how he might be unable to get life insurance in his older age, because of a medical condition that he would have gotten a whole life policy. At this time, I had already realized the reason why a whole life policy would not work for myself and my husband and would not benefit us to pay those extra premiums for it every single month. Remember I mentioned in his situation that he had no savings and nothing long-term for retirement and he had you know, people still relying on his income. That's not something that happens overnight. That was unfortunately years of not having your budget in place, having impulse spending, not prioritizing savings and investments. And so he was not able to save up anything in those 30 years. This is something that I try to make so clear on this channel is that one, of course we're looking at everything holistically, but two, I want to make sure that people understand the benefit of having short-term and long-term savings and investments. And this is that example. So let's say if my 30 year policy term starts today. In 30 years, my goal between my husband and I 
will be just to consistently save money every single month. Also, to build up our emergency fund year over year so that just once again as we get older the emergency fund will just get a little bit bigger my husband and i are at the point where we know we need life insurance now but when we get older and over the course of 30 or 40 years we plan to be able to be self-insured to the point at least when we pass away if we still have dependents or you know if one of us passed away before the other, that there's enough money that we have generated and invested over time that that individual will be taken care of. Thinking about life insurance in this way with the ultimate goal of being able to, quote, insure yourself, will give you that freedom to get the, let's say, lesser cost term insurance policy and then later on not have to pay that insurance at all because you're able to cover yourself for those unfortunate circumstances. I'd recommend either using an online financial calculator or downloading an app on your phone that lets you know how much you'll be able to save over time in an investment account so that you know just how much you need to save every single month in order to have that little nest egg that you should be working toward. If you have any questions about that, go ahead and leave me a comment in the description box down below. While this video is a little bit on the longer side, this is what I'm going to call a brief overview of life insurance because trust me, this video could have been a lot longer. Every week I share videos about how to look at your finances in a holistic way ranging from just your personal finances and budget to your lifestyle and what you're putting in your body to help best fuel your life. Because the way that I see it, all these little aspects of your life all work together so that you can live the life that you want. If you like this video and want to see more videos from me, please be sure to subscribe so that you see more videos from me and be sure to turn on the notification so you can be notified when I post next. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.